Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me in today's video. So today, I'm really excited to be adding on to my beginner series. And today we're gonna to be talking all about foundation and complexion. Now, when I talk about complexion, I mean just makeup wise, skincare is a whole different video. And I will have my skincare routine coming up really soon. Really, really soon. So let's get into this video. Now today I'm going to be focusing all about foundation, how to choose a really good shade for your complexion, what you should be taking into consideration, a concealer shade. I know I get a lot of um, questions asking me what is the best concealer shade to use for your complexion. So we're going to get into that and also a setting powder. I know a lot of people, because there are so many setting powders out there these days, they're kind of like, oh my god, where do I start? But today... Everything is beginner friendly and I'm sure my advanced makeup users can also learn some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started with foundation. Now when it comes to foundation matching, I would say you need to ask yourself three major questions. Number one, what skin type do you have? Is it oily? Is it dry? Is it normal? Is it a combination? And if it's a combination, is it a combination of what? It's very important to understand what is going on in your skin. Combination skin type is a very broad spectrum skin type. It means your skin could be normal and dry, oily and dry, normal and oily. You get the vibe? So you really need to understand your skin type. For reference, my face is pretty normal all around the perimeters of my face, but my T-zone is pretty oily, so my skin tone is a combination of normal and oily. And the reason why I say it's very important to ask yourself this question is because it is very important to know what foundation is going to complement your skin type. If you have very oily skin, you don't really want to go in with an excessively hydrating foundation because hydrating foundations are mostly dewy and they give you like a glow and oily girls for the most part we want matte skin so a matte foundation is better for if you have oily skin and a hydrating foundation is better for when you have normal to dry skin the next question you want to ask yourself is what is my undertone and this is the most important question you will ever ask yourself. Now, a quick way of telling what your undertone is, is by your veins. If you look at your veins, wherever they are visible, if they look green, your undertone is warm. If they look blue, your undertone is cool. Now, if you guys don't quite understand the undertone situation, I will leave a video that I found by Ashley Nicole and I'll put it down below in my description bar because there are a lot of undertones. There's pinky undertones, reddish undertones, there's olive undertones, warm golden, warm neutral, lots of undertones. So I'm gonna leave that video down below so you guys can go ahead and watch it and kind of understand undertones a little bit more better. Now the last thing, the third question you need to ask yourself is what am I looking for in a foundation? What are my concerns when it comes to makeup? For example, do you want to cover acne? Do you want to cover pigmentation? What foundation are you looking for? Are you looking for something that is full coverage to cover everything up? Are you looking for something that's natural? Are you looking for like a soft, perfected look? You really need to understand what it is you're looking for in a foundation and find a foundation accordingly, if that makes sense. If you're looking for a more full coverage, perfected, snatched look, then obviously you will go for a more full coverage foundation. Alrighty, so that is out the way. Now let's get into matching foundation to our face. Now, I have three foundations here. Well, actually two foundations and one BB cream just to show you guys how close these foundation matches are and the kind of colors I like to go for, and the troubleshooting techniques you guys can use. I know some of us do have darker necks, like our chests are very fair, we have darker necks, and our faces are in between the shade of our neck and our chest. So what do we match our face to? Do we match it to our neck? Do we match it to our chest? Do we match it to our face? 
which is it personally i feel like if you have a darker neck i like to go in with a foundation that is a little bit darker than my actual face i find if i go in with a foundation that is my exact skin tone shade it looks how can i say it kind of looks a bit ashy against my dark neck if that makes any sense but this is just my preference you guys but you will eventually find what works for you and all that good stuff so it's all about preference at the end of the day now i like to swatch my foundation shades right here on my jawline i'm gonna go in with the maybelline fit me i can get away with using this shade off camera but on camera it looks very olive like very olive next i'm going to take the shade 334 from maybelline fit me this is definitely a camera friendly shade that's what that looks like then i'm gonna go in with my la girl bb cream now i'm using all drugstore products for this because these are the products you guys will be reaching for when you go to the drugstore. So I'm just going to blend out the shade 332. Blending into my skin pretty well. But on the camera you can see it has a little bit of an olive undertone. And how you can tell it has a little bit of an olive undertone is when it has like this greenish tinge. More so then golden so i'm going to blend 334 if i'm able to fit me you can see this is a beautiful golden undertone it is slightly darker than my actual skin tone and then i'm gonna go in and blend out the la girl So now that I've zoomed you guys out, can you guys see how these foundations look on the skin? This is the BB cream, this is 334, and this is 332. So my perfect match for my personal preference would be 334. So let's apply that to the face and see what a difference it makes. Now the first thing you want to do when it comes to face makeup and foundation is you always want to go in with a primer i'm going to be using my kiki beauty makeup ready face primer i find that this really smooths out my skin and moisturizes my skin enough without me looking oily and it just helps the foundation sit well on my skin and it also helps the longevity of the foundation you can also go in with a pore minimizing primer if you find that you have pores in this area, enlarged pores, an ice pick scarring like I do. But to keep everything pretty simple today, I'm just going to go in with one primer. Also, your skincare is very important. If you really want your foundation to sit well on your face, always go in and really exfoliate the face and really take care of your skin. So going in with the Maybelline Fit Me 334 foundation, this is a very liquidy foundation, so let's mix it up it's honestly the easiest way to apply foundation in these kind of tubes especially with such a liquidy foundation okay i'm gonna go in with a flat top kabuki brush and i'm just going to stipple this into the skin now a lot of people ask me what is the best tool to apply your foundation i personally feel like it has a lot to do with the texture of the foundation if it's very liquidy like this one right here i definitely feel like you need a brush i feel like a sponge is going to soak up all of the product and yeah it's basically product wastage in my opinion so you definitely want to go in stipple the foundation onto your face stipple 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 also i don't know if you guys can tell but for me Going in with just a slightly darker shade of foundation hides the small itty bitty imperfections I have on my face, like my hyperpigmentation areas. Ok 
Okay, so I'm gonna leave the one side of my face bare just so that we can we can compare the natural side with no makeup with the makeup side. Now, when it comes to concealer, a lot of people are confused with regards to what shade should you go for. Should you go five shades lighter? Should you go one shade darker? Whatever the case may be is. Personally, I like a really bright under eye area. Now, when I first started applying makeup, I used to go in with this concealer shade. This is from LA Girl. This is the LA Girl Pro Conceal. This is in the shade Warm Honey. This used to be my go-to shade until I became really fancy and bougie and now I go for like five shades lighter. I would say if you really want like a really highlighted, like fancy, contoured, chiseled look, then definitely go five shades lighter. But also keep in mind, you don't want to go too light, especially if you have dark under eye circles, okay? So I'm going to go in a triangular shape. You can see this is not as light as what I usually go under my eye. I'm going to apply this in a triangular shape because we want to bring the under eye area forward. And so if you just concentrate it under the eye area, it's literally going to sit there and emphasize that area. I'm going to take some on the center of my forehead, bridge of my nose as well, tip of my nose, a little bit on my upper lip. You don't have to do the center of the face, but I would recommend it, especially if you're like me and you have a 5 o'clock shadow on your upper lip, just to brighten up that area just a smidge. I'm going to take a beauty blending sponge and just blend this out. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, you can go in with a shade of concealer that is your your exact, can't speak, your exact foundation shade. But if you really want a little bit of a brightened, awakened look, then definitely go for a shade that is slightly lighter than your foundation shade. And especially if you have dark under eye circles, it is not going to emphasize your under eye area in any way shape or form you guys can see what a clean nice under eye area that gives me so this is what the face looks like perfected even though i did go in with a slightly darker foundation when i went in with a concealer that was one shade lighter than my foundation it kind of balanced out the face really well and you can't really tell that this foundation is darker or slightly darker than my complexion also, when you compare it to my face and neck, there's not too much of a harsh line of demarcation where you're like, okay, she's definitely wearing a mask. You know what I mean? So, this is what the face looks like without, or oh, with foundation. And this is what the face looks like without foundation. Now, you can see we blot out all the natural color in the face. I'm going to go ahead, just finish off the side off my face and I'll be right back. Okay, so as you guys can see, my face is pretty perfected and concealed and all that good stuff. And now we want to kind of matte down the shiny areas of the face because especially if you are buying drugstore products, not all of these foundations set with a matte finish or completely set. Some of them tend to transfer and so we want to kind of avoid that. So we're going to go in with a translucent powder. I highly recommend the Yardley Absolute Translucent Powder for beginners. This is such a good powder and it works really, really well. Don't even bother yourself with all of those banana powders just yet. We will get into that when we get into contouring and highlighting in a different video. But today, we're just focusing on translucent powder. Now, this will last you such a long time, you guys. It is really a good investment. I think it's about 150 Rand Max, 160 Rand Max, and it will last you probably 12 months if you use it every day. I'm almost out of mine. That's a problem. And taking a fluffy powder brush, I am going to start patting this under the eye. We are not baking or doing anything fancy today. We're just setting the foundation. So I'm just going to set the face. Literally just use patting motions. Now, the next step is obviously additional. Because we've blanked out a lot of the color in the face, I like to go in and just bronze up the face and bring back a little bit of dimension into the face. So I'm gonna go in with my Essence Matte Bronzing Powder. And I'm just gonna go along my cheek area, along my jawline. You guys can see it's adding a little bit of definition 
without actually chiseling out the face if that makes any sense and on an everyday basis, this is pretty much what I would do. I would stop at the bronzing, put on some mascara, put on some lips, and be out the door. I'm going to go ahead off of camera, finish up the rest of my makeup, and then we're going to talk about tips and tricks that I think you guys should use when buying foundation. Okay, so now let's talk about tips for buying foundations. We've all had that moment in time where we go to get shade matched and we end up buying the foundation and then we come home and it's not the right shade. It's either too light or too dark or it doesn't look right on the skin, whatever the case maybe is. Here are my tips and tricks to ensure that this doesn't happen to you. So tip number one for purchasing foundation, never, never buy a foundation having tried it the first time in store using in-store lighting. I had to read that off of my page because that's very complicated. So never buy a foundation. The first time having tried it in-store with that in-store lighting, don't be like, oh, okay, it's perfect. Let's go, let's buy it, let me pay for it. Don't do that, you guys, do not do that. You wanna make sure you swatch it on your face, or whatever the case may be is you walk around this doesn't just apply for clicks and discam or whatever it applies for anywhere where you're buying foundation you want to walk around see what the foundation is like in different lightings test it out walk around see how it changes on your face does it look ashy on your face take lots of pictures make sure it's not flashing back all of that stuff and you need to do this a few times before you go back into the store and you're like okay this is the color I want. Because if you do this, you're going to change colors. You're going to be like, okay, this is too light. Then you're going to go back. You're going to try a shade darker in that foundation. You're going to be like, okay, this is perfect, but it's orange. Let me try a different shade. Let me do this shade, that shade. Let me try a different brand. So you're really going to have to trial and error. Don't rush into buying foundation. Rushing foundation purchases never ends well. And that's the second tip, is definitely walk around, try it out numerous times, ask for a second opinion, ask your boyfriend or your husband or your mom or your dad, how does this foundation look? Does it match me? Can you see it? If it disappears into your skin, that's even better. So really get a second opinion and just ask, even if people don't even know what makeup is about, just ask, how does my face look? Does it look like I'm wearing anything? Does it look, you know, conspicuous? Ask them questions. And lastly, if a store provides samples, always ask for a sample. Always. Doesn't matter whether you're buying MAC or Estee Lauder or whether you're using me as a shade reference or whether you're using somebody else as a shade reference and you feel like we are 100% going to match you. Make sure you always ask for samples, you guys. Always, always, always. You really want to go home. You want to try on the foundation. You want to wear it for a full day. See how it looks on your skin. And then be like, okay, uh, maybe NC45 is a bit too orange for me. I need a shade darker or lighter. You need a shade lighter. So you'll go in and you'll say, hey, can you recommend or can you give me a sample of NC44.5? You're going to take that sample, try it on, go home, walk around in different lighting, see how it is. And then when you're really happy, you need to try it at least three times. If you're really happy with how it looks, then you go in and you purchase the foundation. Let's be honest, these foundations are very expensive. So you really, 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 really need to trial and error, try it on, wear it throughout the day. If you don't like how full coverage studio fix glue it is then you ask for maybe studio tech or studio there's so many studio foundations so you could change up the foundation formula and all that stuff so those are my tips and tricks on how to foundation match what concealer you should ideally be using under your eyes what you can use to set your face and all the beginner tips and tricks you guys need to know i love you guys so much don't forget to slay all day every day with our makeup comment down below let me know if this helped you out and i'll talk to you in my next video bye